Psalms chapter 18, a lengthy one. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, A lot of these titles, they're not inspired, but they're there to tell you what the psalm's about. And this is David speaking and singing. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock. Something to stand on. Something secure. Something that got him victory over Goliath. Because Goliath has already happened. Because if it says it came from the hand of Saul, Saul chased David after Goliath. Jesus Christ is our rock. My fortress. Somewhere to go and be safe and get a good night's sleep. My deliverer. My God. My strength. That's a lot of minds for God. But that's what God is to be to us. All of them. In whom I will trust. So not only is he the rock, the fortress, the deliverer, the strength, but he's someone to trust in. My buckler, which is a uh, military uh, a garment. Uh, I've seen a couple... Uh, definitions for it. The one I was been told is like a, a a buckle, like a a belt buckler kind of thing. But you can look it up and maybe see pictures. The horn of my salvation. Now, horn in the Bible is strength, power. A lot of animals that have horns will use them to fight. The horn of my salvation. So the strength of David. The power of David is not what we've read so far, but of salvation. What, what will get us going? What will get us to heaven? The salvation of God by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And my high tower. You get up on the high tower and you can look out and you can see all around. The tower is also part of the fortress. You can't get to the tower unless you're inside the fortress. You know, people, they want to see heaven, they want to see God, and you can't do it till you get in the fortress, and the only way you can get to the fortress is through the door. And Jesus said, I'm the door. A lot of people try to climb over the fortress, but it's too high, too difficult. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. So, Paul says in everything, praise the Lord. Even when you got enemies. And when you're calling upon the Lord in the days of trouble and times of trouble and events of trouble, don't forget to praise the Lord. The sorrows of death compass me. He's being chased by Saul, King Saul. He's afraid that Saul's going to catch him and kill him. Or worse, before he kills him. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Well, the floods of ungodly men would probably be the men that are walking, going through the, the, the title of this psalm, would be the men of uh, Saul. Remember there was one man of Saul? He says, I've seen David over there. And Saul said, hey, I want you to go kill those priests. Okay, here I go. No egg. There was a time that, that uh, Saul said, I, I want to go seek a witch. And his men came to him, well, we know one. You read the council with the people that hanged out with Saul and helped him out, and the council of David's men, you read two different counts. The sorrows of hell come past me about. Men dying around them going to hell. In battle. Dead bodies have gone to hell. Because it says the snares of death prevented me. A trap. David's on the run. Read the accounts. There were times that David should have been killed. There were times that Saul should have been killed. 
There was one story there, you know, at the song, he will be coming around the mountain. I mean, listen, Saul and David just running around this mountain. I'd be afraid, too. I mean, Saul, he didn't call five or ten men. He called thousands of men to get David. There were things that David wanted to do, but death prevented him. You know what one of those things were? I don't know. you got to check the order. I've got... Um, 2 Samuel 22 as a chapter here is a couple times David had Saul in his grass. One time he cut off his skirt. The other time he took the bottle of bruise of water and the spear. And his three buddies there, Joab and the, the, his brothers there, wanted to kill Saul. Well, then David would have been charged with murder. David was afraid, for he was the, the Lord's anointed. You know what prevented him from killing Saul? That he was the Lord's anointed, and maybe then he would have been afraid of hell. See, David knew the law. He knew that there were certain, lo there were certain laws that you died and you went to hell. And one of them is doing guiltiness to the, to the king. Too bad Christians today won't do that to our president. So, in my distress, I call upon the Lord. There you go. Who do you call upon when you got distress? It's supposed to be the Lord. And cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple in heaven. But for David, it's the tabernacle in Jerusalem. Actually, no, it's not in Jerusalem now. Oh, boy, that's wrong. That's, it's not brought into Jerusalem, but into David. I forget where the tabernacle is during Saul's time, but that's where the Lord's coming out of. And my cry came before him, even into his ears, God's ears. God hears your prayers, and prayers are answered three ways. Yes, that's what we want. No. That's not what we want to hear. And then the third, not now. And that's when you're going to have to wait. But Lord, I'm suffering. I'm in trouble. Not now. But Lord, not now. I hear you, but not now. You know how many times maybe David prayed with Saul chasing him all those times? And Lord, isn't that my... Not now. But Lord, he's... Not now. But look, not now. You'll get it. Not now. I'm going to kill Saul. No. I got a sec. No. And then the earth shook and trembled. Second Advent passage. And the foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. Now, you don't find that in David's account or in account. David's going into prophesying. Wait till the Lord comes back. By the way, this Lord, this God of six and seven is the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 6, 12, Revelation 11, 19, Exodus 14, 11, and verse 8. There went up smoke out of his nostrils. That's God. According to Ezekiel 28, that cherubim also had smoke. The Antichrist imitating the Lord. And anger. The cherubim shows up looking like God when God is angry. And fire out of his mouth devoured. Wait till you see the Lord Jesus Christ come out, come back on horseback. Says he has a sword that comes out of his mouth. Yeah, flames. I'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit. First advent. I'll baptize you with fire. The second advent. Hell. Seen some moron the other day had, oh, baptized with fire. You, you don't know what you're talking about. You need to shut up. 
and were shaken because he was wroth. And then it went up smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth. The fire coals were kindled by it. That's angry. You know, when you see someone, they've got smoke coming out. I mean, the cartoons where smoke would be coming out of the ears. He bowed the heavens also. That has not happened. So either God's a liar or it's a future event. And came down. So when we come down with the Lord Jesus Christ... Something with the heavens are going to be bowed. What does that mean? I don't know. And darkness was under his feet. Where's Jesus coming from? The solar system. And at the time at the end of the tribulation, this the last seventh year, the last days of the, the tribulation, there is no moon, there is no sun. The earth is in complete, utter darkness. Remember Egypt, where a darkness that could be felt? And then they're going to see this light at the end of the tunnel, I guess you describe it. And it's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And before they can see, here comes a flame. And the Bible calls us an army that's riding behind the Lord Jesus Christ. But we ain't going to lift the sword. It's going to be done before us. It's like, here comes, you know, you got, you got this big, massive big giant of a guy with a flamethrower and he's got the entire army behind him and the army's just sitting up and just marching through the burnt corpse. And he rode upon a cherub. Well, the Bible says he's coming back on a horse. But where does God lie? Where is God according to the to the Old Testament? He sits there in that mercy seat. What's on either side of that mercy seat? The cherubs. What is that thing that Ezekiel talks about? I mean, he talks about these cherubs come down and there was fire. I mean, here it is right here. David's telling you. Somehow the Ark of the Covenant or God's throne is coming down. You want to talk about Ark of the Covenant? How about the Ark of the Covenant that's in heaven right now with God? Did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. Now, did it say God and the cherubims had wings? Now, we know the cherubims had wings. But it says the wings of the wind. Go we'll draw that a picture. He made darkness his secret place. You can't see heaven. I don't care what NASA does. I don't care what the Chinese does. I don't care if you go to Mars and all that. That's only that's only a little fragment of, of distance between that and, and heaven. His pavilion round about him were dark waters. Oh, oh, that's the universe where they send astronauts in a spaceship. He's called a pilot. Why are those terms nautical? Because when you go into outer space, you go into water. Who believes that? And thick clouds of the skies. I don't know what those thick clouds of the skies are. I've seen the clouds here. That may be the, the ozone they keep crying about. I don't know. At the brightness... That was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. Almost like Sodom and Gomorrah. But what other than that, I can't, I'm not that smart. I, there's something, there are a lot of things in this Bible I can't understand because it hasn't happened. The Lord. Also thundered in the heavens. You know, God has given us something today to, to, to think about him. And every time it thunders, it's his voice. Or a type of his voice. The Bible says one time when he spoke to Jesus, they said it thundered. 
and people worry about the lightning. I worry about the thunder more. It's not the lightning that puts little kids and doggies underneath the bed. It's the thunder. And the highest gave his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. You don't want to be on the earth on the, the seventh year of the tribulation. You think all those plagues, the bowls, the, 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 the uh, seals, and the trumpets are bad? You wait till God comes back. Says they're going to be hiding in caves. You ain't going to hide from God. Don't you wonder how they're ever going to find the caves? Yay! He sent out his arrows. <laughs> wow, ouch. The Antichrist comes with a bow with no arrows. Maybe the Antichrist gets arrows at the end. And scatters them. Oh, and he shot out lightnings and discovered. You mean God has angels, um, God has arrows? Maybe that little, little naked little guy that runs around is stealing God's thing on February 14th. I mean, if you shoot somebody in the heart with an arrow, they ain't going to fall in love. They're going to fall dead. Then the channels of waters were seen. The foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord. The world has a foundation. It looks like the world is going to split open or... One of the oceans or something, they're just going to break apart, maybe like the Red Sea did. And people are going to look down like, wow. I don't know. At the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. Second Advent. Remember, you're to sing this. Judge not, least she be judged. It looks like there's judgment going on here. He sent from above up in heaven he took me he drew me out of many waters there's a rapture when did that happen to David wow he's running from Saul by the way it hasn't there's a rapture in, in Psalms 18, 16. By the way, you know, the Messianic Psalms of 18, 666. Six, six. Right after the mark comes the Lord Jesus Christ. Six and a half years, uh, three and a half years. He delivered me from my strong enemy. Now, come on, was, was Saul really a strong enemy? The guy didn't even want to face a giant. With a whole vast army. <laughs> I mean, the guy was so afraid he was going to take what, a 16, 7 year old boy and say, Here, here's my armor, go get him. <laughs> wow. Yeah, sure. Strong enemy would be the Antichrist. The enemy of the Jews. I think they say about uh, Amen. And from them. Which hated me. The whole world is going to hate the Jew. Now you see how we move from 17 to seven, uh, uh, chapter 17. We are now moving. We're, we're still talking about the Jew here. We're talking about Jesus and David are Jews. And now we're talking about an enemy of the Jew. The entire world is against the Jews. Well, America, no, the entire world. You may have countries that still support the Jew, but in those countries, there are Jew haters. Have you bought a Ford car lately? Do you know that Henry Ford was an active hater of the Jews and would talk to his buddy Adolf Hitler? That Adolf Hitler had on his desk a picture of Henry Ford? That Henry Ford wrote newspapers against the Jews and was stopped only because his son Etzel said it's not good for the business. Do you know about that? That's a little history you need to know. Hen 
Henry Ford was a Jew hater, an enemy of the Jews. But I always hear about Hitler. That didn't cost you nothing. That was a history lesson from the day. Now you're just going to say I'm a liar and, and you're not going to go check it out yourself. Have a good day. Study to show thyself a proof under God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Thank you. The problem with the preachers today, they don't study. They don't look into history. They dream. I have a dream. All right, let me get back. For they were too strong for me. You know, if it wasn't for God and Jesus Christ, the Antichrist would have wiped out, Satan would have wiped out the entire Jewish nation. Listen, how many Babylons have you seen walking around today? You know, he, the, the scholars talk about the Greek and the Hebrew. The Greek and the, How many Greeks have you seen walking around that can tell you about the originals? They're not around. How many Assyrians have you talked to? But yet, there's a Jewish nation. There's a Jewish people that are running around. And you can trace them all the way back to Abraham. And they're stood live and well. If God wasn't protecting them, Satan would have got rid of them a long time ago. You know, Lord Terry's America will be gone. There's no such thing as American. There is no American. You are either of Europe, you are either of Asian nationality, or you're of Africa. And you know, you know your history, the fact is that there were no Indians in America. They were Native Americans. That was another history lesson. That cost you. The Jewish people today are a fact that God loves them and has not given them up. You know what it's going to be one day all the Christians will be gone off this earth? Dead or alive? There's going to be one day where no Christian is going to be found on this planet. But the Jew will be. And then you know during the millennium there's going to be Jews on this earth still? And then you know that there's going to be a time period where everything's going to go kapui, and then we're going to get the new earth, and the Jews are going to be on the earth, the new one. You ain't going to find Americans in New Jerusalem. You're going to find the Jew. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. Now, who are the they? Saul and his men, people who were with Saul, Doag. But the Lord was my stay, helper, guidance, a stop. Someone to rely on. A stay is a support. He brought me forth also into a large place. Now with David, from what we learned on his run with Saul, I don't know where this place would be. But it's for the Christian. If it's for the Jew, oh boy, I tell you, New Jerusalem and, and the New Earth and all that would be a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. You know, the Lord, the, God delights us in Jesus. God delights the Jew because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. That's not us. Unless my righteousness is the Lord Jesus Christ. Not what I can do. No merits that I can. Not of works, at least any man boasts. According to the cleaning, cleanness of my hands, has he recompensed me. While he's running from Saul, he's not doing anything wrong. Even when he was with Saul, he did everything proper, and that only made Saul even angriest. Is er making up new words? For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. So no matter what, David did right, and it's recorded. 
And he had, like I said, he had men in his own army that wanted to do wrong. The peer pressure of David. Oh, oh, no. David just did right. There's no peer pressure. He turned around and told him, in, in my words, shut up. And we're going to do what God wants me to do. You stupid morons. <laughs> what do I have to do with you three guys? Shut up. For all his judgments, God's, were before me. How? David knew the law. David knew that there were certain penalties that you would be stoned. There were certain penalties you had to give up a, a calf. There were certain penalties you had to bring a goat. There were certain penalties that meant you were going to die. <coughs> David feared God and feared his, his law. That's what that verse is saying. And I did not put away his statutes from me. See that? I was also upright before him in God, and I kept myself from my iniquity. David always did right, as, as we're reading Psalms 18. Therefore has the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. Again, no Christian can say that. David brought what animals, what he needed to bring, for a sacrifice to God and did what he was supposed to do according to the statutes in the law. He's like what you would find with uh, uh, Zacharias and his and his wife Elizabeth. I, I had it in my head, now I can't, it says about them that they were flawless or something like that in Luke 1. When it came to the law, they both did right. That's what I'm trying to say. I came in my mind and blew me out. With the merciful, now this is quoted in the New Testament, about God. With the merciful, thou will show thyself merciful. So you want mercy? You treat people with mercy. With the upright man, thou shalt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou will show thyself pure. You want to be pure? You want God to be pure to you? You be pure. Is it amazing what the churches are like today? Why? Why are they like they are today? Why are they all messed up? Because they're messed up. God said, I'll give you a mess up bet. You make me sick, I'll make you sick. And with the forward, that's a that's an evil, wicked person. Thou wilt show thyself for Imagine God. Be not deceived, man, God is not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Why is our church failing? Why are things doing? Because you're not going out telling people about Jesus. You're not cleaned up. You're, you, you think you're, you're doing great and you're lying to yourself. And this is all out of Revelation 3. Why are we so sick? Well, you think the Lord's Supper is just a joke. And you have not read the read the warnings concerned to it. For thou will save the afflicted people. If we go back into the tribulation, the Jews. But will bring down high looks. People think that you know they're they're, they're listen, everyone in, in Washington DC are gonna be brought down. They are not afflicted. They are afflicting us. And if we are poor in the eyes of God because of them, woe will be to them. Did you know, I quoted that, and I can't quote it, but we, we heard it in Second uh, Corinthians 10 11. It says, you know, his ministers talking about Satan's ministers in the pulpit. And they shall be according to their works. You know, I never read that before. Their works. Revelation 20 says, their works shall be judged. You know, all the destruction that they do, they're going to have to give an account. And you know what I was thinking? 
And I know it's a long psalm, but according to the works that we're talking about here, can you imagine God opening up a perverted Bible and reading it before them and having to give an account matched to his word? That still works. Imagine a, a preacher getting, that's been in a pulpit that's been wrong. And God call up every person and have them face that guy at the judgment. And having that guy who stood behind the pulpit give an account for everybody that's been in his church. How about a preacher in this church that don't witness? How would you like to have God call you up and bring the entire neighborhood, maybe it's not the entire city that you live, and have to give you account? You think I'm full of it? What about Revelation 20 when those that go into hell bring you up as hell? Population of such and such city, 1,000. All right. You stand right here as we judge as 1,000 people with your congregation. And you give an account before I cast them into hell. For thou, God, will light my candle. The candle in the tabernacle was lit and off by the brazen altar. You know what that brazen altar pictured? Pictured hell. The Lord that my God will enlighten my darkness. You know that candle went out during Samuel's time? It did. You know what happened in that holy place? It went dark. You know we have a period in history called the Dark Ages because the Bible was shut. It was prevented from getting to the people. See, David knows his Bible. Too bad we don't today. For by thee, God, I have run through a troop. Like I said, I don't know if it, you checked at the time. I, I haven't, but there was one time I said they're running around on the mountain chasing each other. It says that David was on one side and Saul was on the other side. And then there was a time when, when David, he's got Saul's army over here. David shows up and God gave him a, a perpetual sleep. David and his men walk right up to the king. Take his cruise of water and his spear and something else, I think it was. And they walk back out. And he cries out, hey, Abner, you fool, you ought to be die. Oh, what's going on? There was a guy that came up to the king for destruction. You know, the, the three guys of, of David wanted to kill him again. David walked through a troop of men, and, and they all just sat there sleeping. And, David, and God's probably having <laughs> I just love David. You know, I just love doing these old things for him. And David's probably walking through those guys. I mean, David probably doesn't care. I've got the joy, joy, joy down. I wonder why I'm walking amongst these guys. Hey, I, I went to school with that guy. And, and hey, he owes me 20 bucks on that, that chariot race. And, and that guy, I used to sit with him at the table of Saul's and all that. That guy, he was, Oh, there's the king. And by my God have I leaped over a wall. Now match that with Joel chapter 2 verses 7 and 25 as the Christian. The Bible says we're going to go over walls and we're not going to break rank. As for God, his way is perfect. Amen. The word of the Lord is tried. It's been tried through all the ages and it remains strong. And While well, libraries burnt up and books have failed away and they go on a clearance booth for dollars, not 25 cents. If not, here, take the stupid thing. I don't want it no more. As it gets moth written and, and mildewy and all that. And the word of God is still read in our home in December 7th in 2013. He's a buckler. There's that buckler again, that, that military garment to all those that trust in him. So it's the kind of thing that you have to trust. I guess a buckler, if it's that belt buckle, isn't there a part, something that you wear, it's called a trust or something? I came to my head. A lot of things come to my head to scare me. For who is God? Save the Lord. Jehovah. I'm not going to go into Hebrew, Lord, and all that. For who is a rock? Save our God. There's no other. Now, there's a church out there that professes that, 
that Peter is their rock. Well, you got rocks for brains. There's only one rock. It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my, my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hind feet. They're deer. And sitteth, sitteth me upon my high places. David's graceful. He teaches my hands to war. Thou shalt not kill. David says God taught him how to, how to do war. So evidently that verse, thou shalt not kill, does not go with wartime. Read the life of Israel. God told them, go in the land and destroy all. But if a man kill a man, he's a murderer. Okay? Broken. So that a bow of steel is broken by my arm. Now David was a strong, if he could take a bow that is made of steel and break it, David was a strong man. I wouldn't want to mess with him. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. All right, here a shield is a salvation. If you run over to Ephesians 6.16, 6, the shield is faith. The helmet of salvation. Now, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not trying to say the Bible is a lie or anything. This is something how faith and salvation, you put them together. And for us, the helmet, the hat, is salvation. And thy right hand has holding, or, yeah, holding me up. That's Jesus. And thy gentleness has made me great. David had a lot of great opportunities and a lot of great events in his life, even though he, he all the trouble he had. You know, during one time, he found a wonderful woman named Abigail. And Abigail had the most brutish husband in the world. And those two got together. And then he went for another wife. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me. He's given him big feet. You want to see a Bigfoot? There he is. He's in Psalm chapter 18. What do you do with Bigfoot? When's the last time you ever saw an elephant fall over? That's what he's saying. You know, he's enlarged my step. He's giving me big feet so I can stand ground. There was a guy in David's army. Man, he stood in the ground of beams and fought. There was a guy in David's army. He held that sword and that sword became part of him. That my feet did not slip. You don't want your feet to slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. There was a time when David was going to fight. I don't like I said, I don't know what the time frame is, but he goes, he was gonna fight with the Philistines, and God God stopped that. Yeah, so evidently, I mean, this is when Saul died, so. This is not during his time. But later on in David's life, he, and he goes back to Egg, uh, I forget what, Eklon, something like that, Eklain, Eclair, mm, me. Uh, he goes back and he finds out his entire family, his entire soldier's family has been taken away captive. And his own men are speaking about killing David, and they're all upset. And David said, let's go. And he's got 200, are so tired, they can't, you know, he said, you guys just stay here. He takes 400, and they go, and they kick some butt. And he gets his wife and he gets everyone back. I have wounded them that were not able to rise. They were fallen under my feet. David, thou shalt not kill. That's not what it means. He's in battle. He's in war. You mon. You know, can you imagine the Muslims coming up to us as Americans? We are. They're going to conquer. You can't fight me because the Bible says thou shalt not kill. You only have your head. You ain't not supposed to do that. Judge not me. She be judged. I got the Constitution. Those Muslims will come in here and just tear us right up. 
make a slave. I gotta work only 40 hours a week, over 40 hours. My union says I get time and a half. <laughs> yeah. Now when the Muslims come over and take us over, you'll work day and night and night and day. And not get paid. Coming. This this ass belt sizer about the Great Babylon. Yay! Oh, what happened? Why am I in hell? What happened? Some of you know you know what I'm talking about. Shame on you! Alright, where was I? For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Oh, well, look at that. God said into the battle. Thou hast subdued me under me those that rose against me. Victory. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as off to war. Listen, that enemy will be put down, not by us, but by God. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them. Even unto the Lord, but he answered them not because they were not of God. You know, in the tribute, I mean, the, when the Lord comes back, there are going to be people going to cry to the Lord, you had your chance. You had your chance. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Dust in the wind. Dust in our heart. Death, death, death. It's a bloody book. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people. Some people wanted him dead. Some people wanted his neck. And thou hast made me the head of the heathen. He had non-Jews in his camp. Jonah and Peter would have hated him. You got those dead doves in there. You, you look what they, they, they chopped that pig up and they're eating it, David. Yeah, I'm not. You. you get in a boat and go to Tarshish. Some of you know you know what I'm talking about. Or even believe what I'm talking about. Some of you know you know what I'm... Uh, okay. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. When he becomes king. And he's got Gentile uh, uh, rulers that are all working with him. Ha uh, Haman, Haman like that. I mean, and for Solomon, he brings all the wood and brings stuff for, for, the, for the tabernacle, for the temple. As soon as they hear me, they will obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. All the way until he had that affair with Bathsheba. You know that? David's rule, David's was, was the law. When did people disobey Saul when he was king? Oh, with Goliath. You're supposed to fight. No, no, not me. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close place, places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avenges me and subdueth the people under me. God gets the victory. God's the one that did it. David didn't do nothing. He delivereth me from my enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. The Jews in the tribulation in all their life, God got the victory. God gave them the victory over Babylon. God gave them the victory over sort of Rome, but it will. Gave him the victory over Egypt in the book of Exodus. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. The violent man. That's an interesting word. The violent man. The wicked man. Antichrist. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord. You imagine Israel. When they finally see the Messiah coming, as he picks them up, and you just imagine, you know how you know how much of a praise is going to be for that Jew, for the Lord Jesus Christ, and the praise? It's going to take a thousand years. They will they will have a they will have the temple there, they will bring back the law, and they will do finally everything they're supposed to do to please their Messiah. 
Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen. So even if the heathen come, I'm going to praise you. You know, there are people on, 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 on holidays and special family events that they'll go to their family who are the heathen and they won't praise the Lord. They'll be there. Oh, we're not going to say nothing about God. We ain't going to offend nobody. We're just going to enjoy the meal, enjoy the fellowship, and skip out on church. We got a family thing coming up Sunday. Well, we can't go to church and we're not going to go there and tell them about Jesus because we may not be invited for the next time. Grandma and Grandpa and Dad and all of them will be upset if I mention Jesus. And well, if you bring Stiley to our family thing, he's going to tell you about Christmas. He's going to tell you about Jesus. He's going to tell you about the Bible. Don't fight him! Because he's going to want to bow his head and pray over the meal. No, can't have that. And sing praises unto, unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and his showeth mercy to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forevermore. Well, gee, who is anointed to David and his seed evermore? The Lord Jesus Christ. Go check Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 3 and find out who David's seed comes to. It comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God in the highest. The Lord God of all coming from, the, from Judah. The kings. The Jews are always God's people and he will always protect them. Being his children now, they are bad and he has to chastise them. And it's a long chastisement. Do you realize that as far as the chastisement in Israel, God's given them a chance right now, but he hasn't pulled his, their pants down and given them a rod yet? That don't come into the Antichrist. It's a seven-year whipping. Ouch. You know what God does to the Christian if you don't obey his chastisement today? If you don't... If you don't adhere to his whipping and get right today he makes you walk for all eternity without a crown wow that's something and that song with wear a crown wear a bright and shiny crown you imagine uh, you know if that song is ever sung in heaven the guy said there I can't wear a crown Everything else was more pure. I can't wear a crown. Because I didn't love you so dear. A lot of people around them wear a crown. And they're casting it down as the elders cast down theirs. You know? Now is the time to live for the Lord. Like now is the time for salvation. Now is the time to live. Once that trumpet blows, you can't get a do-over. You can't push that video game. You know, it says game over. You can't push that button or put another quarter or whatever you, you pay today and restart. Ding, 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 ding. No, that don't work. That's a Satan line. You know, you don't, uh, one more thing I'll close just to say about that. You know why people are getting killed today in schools and all that? It's a video game thing. See, in the video game, you shoot him and all that, and then you play the next round, the guy gets back up, and he lives. And then you find out in real life that doesn't happen. That didn't cost you. Hey, a lot of things that didn't cost you anything today. It's the truth. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, 
how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died.